Hi everybody, welcome back to Tunes Reviews. Today, I am so excited to be back with you all. It's been a few months. Um, I do apologize for that. You guys know how I do it anyways. I kind of peek my head when I'm feeling inspired. But these last couple months, um, I've actually really wanted to do some reviews. It's just that we had moved again, so that's the second time in a year and a half. Um, we got a, a bigger house. Um, and there's just been some really wonderful things going on in my personal life as far as like the movie stuff that I've been doing. So that's been keeping me busy. And um, I got a new job. So there's just like lots of turbulence and lots of stuff eating up my time. But I have been wanting to do a review and I'm very happy to be doing one right now. I lied though, this isn't a review. This is a top 10 list, but I wanna kinda like ease my way back into it that way I can do a, a very well constructed review for you after I've kind of found my footing again with this next video. So I'm just gonna go over the top 10 fragrances that I've been wearing most often as of late. And you're gonna see that there is a couple darker fragrances in here that I'm gonna kind of go over first. Um, the list in which I've constructed here isn't necessarily uh, 10 to 1 is like one is the most but really I think that the top three or four are probably the ones that I've been wearing the most as of the last few weeks um, But I have been wearing all of these very frequently. I, I seem to be really really um, Allured to all ten of these in the last month, and I just have been wearing them very frequently also side note I'm sorry if you hear a bunch of crap going on outside. Uh, there's some workers out there They're like taking down trees, you know the telephone poles, the wires might get screwed up otherwise, whatever. So first up is a fragrance that's actually very dark, and I do enjoy wearing these darker scents in the blaring heat sometimes. I don't know why, call me crazy, I just think that the skin chemistry, um, you know, the sweat mixed with the heat and, and some of these darker fragrances, especially if they're musky, uh, do very well for themselves. And this one is no slouch, and I've never actually seen it talked about other than in sampling videos. And this is from Strangers, um, and this is called Burning Ben. Burning Ben is exquisite to me. I think it's probably my favorite fragrance from the Strangers line. Uh, Prin is a, a wonderful perfumer. I think he's very challenging. Um, he makes fragrances that are very different uh, opposed to what else is on the market. Um, I think that if you are familiar with a house like Slumber House, uh, you would definitely benefit from checking out this house because it's kind of along the same lines and in the same wheelhouse as these more uh, aesthetic, um, almost art pieces rather than like, oh, I'm wearing fragrance today and I smell good. So I really do appreciate that. This fragrance is essentially tar and espresso and musk, and it is really not for the faint of heart. This is really deep. Um, it's very resinous. It's very thick, uh, but I will say, it doesn't necessarily project, it's not like super loud. Um, it does become a skin scent fairly soon after you apply it, but it lasts a pretty good amount of time and it is bold. Uh, but I love this stuff in the heat. It is absolutely 100% something that is invocative of like hot tar to me. So I, I don't know, it just reminds me of the summer and the heat and I love wearing it. Uh, the next fragrance that I've been wearing pretty frequently, I don't know if it's just because I am really, really jonesing for fall. Uh, the heat is not my friend. I am not a big fan of the summer. I, I don't know about you guys, but where I am right now in upstate New York, it's been 90s and high 80s with high humidity like every other day, and I'm really tired of it. Um, it's bad, yeah, uncomfortable. When I'm just kind of hanging out inside of my house, I've been wearing a lot of Parfums de Marly Herod. This is easily my favorite fragrance by Parfums de Marly. Um, I love this stuff. I think it smells like a mixture of hazelnut spread and kind of like a coffee or a honeyed, a honeyed coffee. So I really, really have been enjoying that. And I wear it mostly when I'm like inside doing stuff like writing my scripts or um, playing video games and decompressing or... Uh, just having a night in with my fiance and watching the movies or whatever. So it's kind of like my comfort scent as of late. Um, I do have a few others on here that have been my comfort scent, number one especially. But this is one that I am been, I've been wearing to get kind of in that zone of just relaxation. And it's a fragrance that I've been wearing 
more so for those days where it's like 75 or below. Um, I certainly don't wear it when I'm going out somewhere, although who cares, wear it whenever you want, right? Uh, just for me personally, it's more of my cozy scent, my relaxation scent. Number eight is a fragrance. Um, there's a couple bottles on here that are nearly full, and that's because I just bought these bottles and I had gone through either uh, finished my bottle or had gone through the samples or decants that I had purchased in order to come to the conclusion that I needed a bottle. And this is one of those. Um, I had bought two 5ml uh, decants of this and I fell in love with it. I think it's incredibly original. This is Sydney Rock Pool by Arquiste. Um, contrary to the bottle, you know, it is an aquatic, but it's almost like the way hot concrete smells next to a beach resort or like how hot concrete smells um, with maybe some cocktails and stuff on, on a table next to a pool. Uh, it's definitely got that water meets concrete with a little bit of coconut vibe and I, I don't know, I, I think it's incredibly unique. I think that if you've ever tried uh, Tom Ford's, uh, what is it, Salt Oud? No, it's not Salt Oud. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a Tom Ford fanboy, and I can't think of what the hell it is. Marine Oud, whatever. The Oceanic Oud fragrance they came out with that's now discontinued. Um, if you're a fan of that, I did not hop on it in time. Uh, I can't find it anywhere, but if this is very... Uh, it kind of resembles a bit of a, fra a fraction of what that fragrance is. It's not quite as like seaweedy, and it's not so in your face, uh, but this is absolutely delicious. I think it's a very interesting fragrance, and I think that you should check it out if you are a fan of like raw coconut and want something that's a little bit more uh, interesting and not necessarily falling in the same category as every other aquatic fragrance. So that is Sydney Rock Pool by Arquiste. Next up, I need to get the full 50 ml bottle of. This is something that I purchased last fall and I absolutely love this. I've been wearing this a lot, especially on the hot days because this actually packs a punch. It's uh. It's not something that you have to wear on hot days, but I just think that like the heat mixing with the cedar note that's in here, that's the backbone of the fragrance, is just incredible. And that is Coco Moon by Beach Giza. Now, this is pretty much, it's very simplistic. It's cedar and coconut. It's incredible. I love this. I think it's absolutely outstanding. Um, this is a fragrance that I think anyone could get along with if you like coconut and cedar wood and it's completely unisex. I've just been loving it. I love its simplicity, and I love that everybody else around me loves its simplicity too. It's just great on a hot day. It's almost like that refreshing cocktail you get on a hot day, and it just makes you feel clean and, and ready to go do whatever it is you're doing that day. I love this stuff. It's energizing. Number six is a fragrance that's a heavier fragrance as well, um, but I do love how this smells in the heat. I think that if you are a fan of Killian's Straight to Heaven, you should hop on this. It's got a bit more of a pepper vibe inside of the fragrance along with all the other uh, notes that make up Straight to Heaven and it also lasts longer so if you have issues with projection and longevity with Straight to Heaven this is actually to me kind of a better alternative and I do love me some Straight to Heaven. This is Chris Collins Dan Sauvage and this is a fragrance that I think is criminally underrated and barely ever talked about. I discovered this back in September when I was in Cleveland, Ohio on an impromptu little getaway uh, with the fiance and I absolutely fell in love with this. I had discovered this and Arquiste the Architects Club and Iron Duke by Beaufard, 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 Beaufard. So those three fragrances uh, ended up making it all on my buy list. <laughs> so, uh, but this one is actually my favorite of the bunch. I think that this is absolutely exquisite. This is definitely like a me scent. This kind of is something that I feel like uh, projects my personality and who I am and what it is that I like in fragrances. But I love, I love the way the spice smells when it's heated up with that cedar wood, uh, with the rum. And I think that this is a lovely uh, going out fragrance, even in the summertime, absolutely perfect. Next up is uh, one that I've been loving for those really hot days, you know, when you really don't feel like you should be wearing a fragrance because it's just that hot and it's 95 and you're just drenched in sweat. Um, this of course is Dior Homme Cologne. Everyone knows about this at this point. It's incredible. That's citrus done right. It actually doesn't um, do so horrible when it comes to the performance as well. 
you know, I'm getting six hours out of it. It's projection is fairly decent depending on if it, you know, the sweat just melts it away. But uh, yeah, that fragrance has just been incredibly refreshing. And it's one of those fragrances that I don't see myself wearing so much throughout the rest of the year, but it's like a summer staple, 100%. Number four is an oldie, but a goldie. It's one of my favorite fragrances of the last four or five years. I've been wearing this. Um, I've gone through two bottles of it already. This is now my third. And uh, what can I say about it? I think that this is a more transparent coffee fragrance. I think that this is, can be worn all year long. It's literally a Swiss army knife in my opinion. And it is one of the most complimented and most revered fragrances in my arsenal. And everybody just loves this stuff. Never had a complaint. This is Carthusia Terra Mia. I think that this is one of those fragrances that anyone can get along with. It's just crowd pleasing. It's incredible. Um, the fragrance that I think that is most, is closest to this DNA would be Givenchy Play Intense for men. I think that they both have this burning sugar note mixed with that coffee and this one has hazelnut. Um, and it's it's very very similar to that fragrance which is now discontinued and uh, for a 100 ml bottle of this you can pretty much get it for the same price so um, check out Carthusia Terra Mia if you like a hazelnut and burning sugar coffee I think that it's again it wears light so you can wear it in the summertime if you're a gourmand lover and a coffee lover like me you can certainly appreciate that next up is uh, one of the fragrances that I've found in the last year that I, uh, on first sniff, I just knew that I had to have a bottle. I absolutely love this stuff. And this is my first bottle from this brand, and I absolutely adore uh, this particular fragrance. And I've, I've liked a couple others, but this one really takes the cake for me. This is Still Life in Rio by Olfactive Studios. Yeah, this is just happiness. Happiness. It's pineapple and all of those paradise type concoctions of fruits uh, blended together and just has such a, a fizzy alcoholic drink almost like a gin um, bombarded with tropical fruit type vibe and I just love this coconut pineapple uh, rum and yeah so never mind the gin it's more of a rum uh, the rum with these tropical fruits, almost like a tropical rum punch, I would guess. Um, but it's not thick. It wears it wears the same way that Luministe does, which is why I kind of went in that gin tonic uh, direction. But it's, yeah, I would say that it, it wears very similar similarly to Luministe. So if you're a fan of Luministe, then check out Still Life in Rio. I think that fragrance is just so, so inviting. Number two, I'm wearing this today. Um, this is probably one of my favorite discoveries of the last year. Well, it is. It's in my top three uh, favorite discoveries of the last year, and it's probably going to quickly make it my top 20 favorite fragrances of all time, and is officially my favorite fragr fragrance to wear in the summer, my favorite summer fragrance to date. I've hardly seen anyone talk about this, but I've certainly seen like a little bit more traction on YouTube, and this is Ramon Manigol Isla Blanca, and this is just absolutely breathtaking to me. Absolutely gorgeous coconut palm leaves it's crisp it's fresh it's inviting it's tropical it is just so good it is so good it's paradise in a bottle i promise you if you love fragrances that just transport you like on the beach that's it that's it uh i would say <laughs> that this is the best representation of that kind of fragrance even over something like creed virgin island water so take that for what you will I highly recommend it. I think you should go check it out. And finally, my number one, which is one of my favorite fragrances of all time. I think that this is probably in my top 10 favorite fragrances. This has been a fragrance that I have loved for years since its release. And since I went to go to Min New York in New York City seven whatever years ago, I guess, um, maybe eight. This fragrance and the house in general is actually one of my favorites of all time. And... I'm glad that it is because I think that the owner, the creator, is one of the nicest people ever, John Pegg. This is from the House of Kerosene, and this is Unknown Pleasures. Unknown Pleasures is absolutely exquisite to me. I love this stuff. Unknown Pleasures by Kerosene 
is one of the most intoxicating fragrances that I've ever gotten my nose on. Everybody loves this stuff when I wear it. I just melt over this stuff. It makes me gush. Um, it's just basically this delicious lemon tea and I almost get a maple syrup vibe mixed together. And I just, oh my God, I love it. I love this stuff. One of my all time favorite fragrances. It wears incredibly well in the heat in the summer but it also wears incredibly well in the fall and the spring. Um, I think that this is a Swiss Army knife yet again, and I think that this is one of the most criminally underrated houses and fragrances uh, to wear for the summer. I think that Unknown Pleasures and previously mentioned Dan Sauvage are the two that I use most for my nights out, and I think that um, for my everyday casual use, it's really been La Isla Blanca, uh, Dior Homme Cologne and Still Life in Rio. So if you want, um, please, in the comments down below, let me know what you've been wearing most, whether if it's a top three, your favorite, top five, top 10, whatever suits your fancy. And uh, I can't wait to see what you all have been up to and what you've all been wearing. Thank you all so much for stopping by and coming to see me yet again. I hope you're all doing spectacular and I will see you all soon.